Um, always honored to be here in um, a guest here in the territory of the Dish with One Spoon, um, the territories of the Haudenosaunee and the Anishinaabe people, and particularly the Mississauga of New Credit. Um, in some ways, I'm not the most obvious choice of a person to be speaking about Ramsey Cook, the noted historian of Canada who passed away on the 14th of July at the age of 84. Unlike Donald Wright, who's going to be speaking after me, I am not and will never be a scholar of historical writing in Canada in general, or of Cook in particular. I have not read all of Cook's books and essays, and I think it is fairly safe to say, if not certain to say, that I'm less familiar with them than many of the people in this room, certainly many historians of Quebec or nationalisms likely are. Cook supervised a staggering 39 dissertations, but my um, 1998 dissertation was not one of them. Cook did teach me. He examined my um, York University PhD comprehensive exam, methodically picking apart his styrofoam coffee cup during the oral exam, <laughs> and making wry comments, also wholly correct comments, about what he called my British Columbian French. Um, <laughs> Cook um, was involved with my dissertation a bit with the, the proposal stage until he retired in 1996. And after that, I had, I think, the kind of connection to him that many historians um, across Canada did. He commissioned and edited an entry I wrote for the Dictionary of Canadian Biography, where he was general editor from 1989 to 2005. He wrote me letters of reference. And occasionally, we ran into each other at conferences, and we sometimes corresponded by phone, letter, and after he grudgingly came around to email um, electronically. And I'm going to come back later to those emails, because they matter. What also matters, I think, is Cook's record is what we might call an active or an engaged historian, and what we might also call an ally. And amid all of that, what I will call his capacious practice of Canadian history, understood here in the capital H sense and disciplinary in all the senses of the term. <coughs> history is about the past, but we write it in the present, and it can't be any other way. Cook's history always reflected his intimate engagement in a complicated present. One defined for much of his career by questions of French-English relations, and toward the end of his writing career by questions of Indigenous peoples, Indigenous lands, and what has been defined as Canadian history. There is, of course, Cook's critical and work in formal electoral politics, which Gail has already spoken about, including his relationship with liberal politician and prime minister, eventually Pierre Elliott Trudeau, which is documented in, the top, in his um, one published memoir, The Teeth of Time. There are also his many letters to the editor, his media appearances ranging from the CBC TV show he hosted in the early 1970s, and you can watch that on CBC's digital archives for a retro treat, um, to his 2013 appearance on CBC Radio Sunday Morning. Cook's take on Canadian history was capacious, both in the sense of what it might include and who might be both a subject and a practitioner of it. When I was a grad student, he would leave books in my mailbox, including Nick Thomas's 1994 Colonialism's Culture, the book that gave me the language of a colonial project. And this was a particular kind of gift for a student looking to return, I think, to a serious reckoning of empire amid a scholarship which remained chiefly and sometimes fiercely national in its orientation. And for all his interest in nationalism, Cook rejected the idea that Canadian history was at best a national enterprise of either French or English nationalism that could be best that, in a way, he rejected that the best that we could do could be represented by names like John A. Macdonald. Cook supported women's history and women as historians, as Gail already spoke to and as Franca Yacovetta will be speaking about um, later next year in tangible ways. He published the edition of the Cleverdon Memoir. He also, with Wendy Mitchinson, who is here, um, co-edited The Proper Sphere. His epic and prize-winning book, The Regenerators, included women not as peculiar outliers or reachy additions, but as part of the fabric of the past, as, of course, we remain in the present. Since the 1980s, the amount of historical scholarship on Indigenous people in Canada has expanded dramatically. But as Mary Jane Logan McCallum has shown, this shift has occurred without a co-committant rise in Indigenous people as acknowledged historians, as members of the historical profession. It was in the late 1990s that Cook brought the translated version of um, her on Wendat historian George Sui's 1989 book to the Early Canada Research Group that then Alan Greer convened at the University of Toronto. I think the underrepresentation of indigenous, black, and racialized um, people in the historical profession in Canada remains a problem and one that we don't have a readily agreed on language for addressing or naming. 
I made all of this every once in a while an email would come from Ramsey. He wrote me when I gave the Creighton Lecture at U of T telling me we are all so proud of you. He wrote when I was elected Vice President of the Canadian Historical Association telling me that he hoped that the gig would not be as much work as it once had been. I think it's safe to say that is not the case. <laughs> um, he wrote when I published an op-ed in the Winnipeg Free Press, a paper that he was um, quite familiar with from his work on John Dafo and the Free Press, and my op-ed was a response to what I would characterize as cheap criticism of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's final report. Ramsey wrote in support, he told me, it is very good, especially in its clear argument and moderate tone. I might have been angrier. It's interesting. <laughs> uh, who has asked the French Canadians, the Armenians, the Israelis, or Scots, etc., to forget their past? In June 2016, Ramsey wrote about my 2015 book, Colonial Relations, making just and well-earned jabs about its ridiculous sticker price by Cambridge University Press, <laughs> and offering me a close reading that was at both at once sympathetic and critical. I told him in return that I had written a short book about settler colonialism, Winnipeg, and the Shoalake Aqueduct, and that I would send him a copy. I was at Winnipeg's Thunderbird House eating soup and bannock with Anishinaabe and settler people with whom I have worked on these difficult histories and with whom I live in this difficult present when I got an email from Don telling me that Ramsey had passed away. I had sent the book as I'd promised to, um, but amid the usual chaos of a life of a middle-aged woman academic with two children, it took me a couple of weeks to get around to actually getting it in the mail. And I think the book probably arrived in the midst of his short illness. But I'm glad that I sent it, as I'm glad for the books and the articles he wrote, the emails he sent, the times he spoke politically but never dogmatically on the radio, the books he got me to read, and for his capacious kind of Canadian history, one that had room, maybe even transformative space, for the kind that I most want to see.